Hey you guys, it's Britt. Today I wanted to jump on real quick and share a video with you from Alicia from The Doherty Dozen where she talks about how social media is just their hobby and they don't use it to live off of. Obviously, in my opinion, allegedly that's a massive lie, but we're going to talk about it. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so if you're clicking on this video, you probably know who the Doherty Dozen is. They have a, a massive platform on TikTok and their presence on YouTube is growing. They are a um, family with 12 kids. Alicia is the mom and she is the one who runs their social media presence, the, you know, very large one that they do have. She's the one who makes the content and is the kind of face of their presence online. Like she's in all the videos. She's um, kind of orchestrating everything that's going on for the camera. And a common, um, a, a common point of conversation is the amount of money that she's been able to make by exploiting these kids that either came to her through kinship, adoption, or biological kids. Obviously, um, no matter how they got to her, my argument has been that they all deserve the same amount of privacy. None of them should be used as a way to make her look like a savior or put her on a pedestal. I think that adopting is amazing. And, um, you know, if you're in a financial position and you have the capacity to take care of a child and actually give them a better life, I think that's amazing. But um, in my opinion, I also think that a child having a good life does not equate to them being exploited and having their, at times, very tragic pieces of their life story told for them. And this is something that she's done with a lot of the kids that have come to her um, that are not her biological kids. It's sharing medical history, mental health diagnoses, um, medications that they might be on, what kind of doctors they see. And there's just zero privacy and it's a big problem and that's why I'm talking about them. I really wish that some bigger channels would talk about Alicia because, um, you know, it, it's just nice to see more people giving commentary on things like this. I, um, I, I just like to see when people are on the same page. So that's all. On well, my very first video that I did about her and their presence online, I had a little bit of the info mixed up. I thought that the two children that just came to her home recently, I thought that they were foster. They are a kinship placement. Um, the way that I look at that is even if she is friends with the birth mom, um, that doesn't really matter to me because it's still not a permanent, um, permanent full custody that she has on these kids. And let's just say that she did have permanent full long-term custody of these kids. They still don't need to be exploited. And that's where I will stand on it. So I did make a correction in that first video, but um, my opinion has not changed since then. And I, I still truly stand on the, the point that they all deserve privacy. And um, so I wanted to share this video with you guys. We're not going to watch the whole thing. It's just part of it where she talks about how social media is just fun for them. It's fun. It's just, you know, the money doesn't matter. Even though she herself has stated that she makes over $40,000 a month by being a full-time influencer. So she's bringing in 40, over $40,000 a month by doing this. And you're going to try to tell me that it's just a hobby and you don't live off that money. I call bullshit. Bare minimum, let's be honest. Seems like it's so impossible for YouTubers to be honest. So this came from a deleted income video. And this woman is making bank every month by making this content. She's saying um, monthly incoming, teacher, coach, cleaning, online job, <clears throat> Instagram, Facebook, promos, child tax. And let's see, you were talking about over $35,000, $40,000 a month by her doing what she's doing. 
it is truly something very rare to find a YouTuber that is actually honest and is honest for a long period of time. The numbers start growing, the income starts growing, and the integrity and honesty just disintegrates overnight. So let's see what she has to say. Last thing that I want to say before we get into her video is that she was on a live stream this afternoon showing everyone on YouTube um, where her children sleep at night. This is something that I've been talking about for a while, so I'm not going to harp on it for a really long time. But can we stop showing the internet where kids sleep at night, especially with someone like her who has shown the front of their house multiple times. People know where they live. They have a plaque on the front of their house that has the house number and the name of the street. She shows people where she runs errands. She People know how to find her her house. It's not, it's not a secret. She's provided so much info to people online to be able to locate it. And then you're doubling down by showing people where your kids sleep at night. I don't understand how anyone could feel okay sharing with the world where their children sleep at night. It's reckless and you cannot tell me that you care about your kids' well-being if you're showing strangers where they lay their heads at night. It's Alicia with the Doherty Dozen. And I am in my car because I am going to take you running errands with me today. However, I first wanted to do a family update vlog real quick uh, because many of you are wondering, how did we have... Hold on, my hair is super frizzy. Dryer sheet hack. How did we have 10 kids and now all of a sudden we have 12 kids? Uh, and what's going on with our two bonus kids and what does a bonus kid mean? So anyways, I wanted to answer those questions real quick. That's better before we run errands together so I don't like that she says bonus kid to me that kind of segregates them from the rest of the kids and doesn't make them a unit usually some of you guys might know I have a what is technically a half sister but I call her my sister she's my sister I don't call her my half sister I don't call her uh, a bonus sibling. It, it, she's just my sister. So I don't know, to me, when you have these kids coming in to a home that they're not familiar with, spending all of their time with kids that they don't know, and then the mother saying that they're a bonus kid to me, I don't know. I think that it just kind of puts a line in the sand that doesn't need to be there. Just say that they're kids. Simple. How did we end up with two extra kids? Um, I think about a month ago, a little more. Uh, Bonus kid, extra kids. Like to me, it's just, um, she, she might not mean for it to come off like, like this, but to me, it's it feels uh, kind of insensitive and like you're putting them in their own box and like they're not your kids until they run through this you know, first initial period of time. I don't know. To me, it's just a little off-putting. I know that that's not the most serious thing ever, but again, I'm just sharing my opinions on this video as she presents it. Childhood friend that I grew up with, her kids were needing to go into foster care. Um, and could we take them instead of them going into foster care? And we weighed the pros and cons and like, I mean, it's a big, big, big decision to like add two more kids to your family when you already have 10 kids. Um, and we talked about it as a family. We went over, I mean, we like debated, deliberated on it for a long time um, to the point where the kids did go into foster care and they were miserable, miserable. So, so she said there that they went into foster care and they were miserable. So I understand that they were technically placed through a kinship but they were a part of the foster care system and that's why i in my first video said um that i thought that they were through the foster system because even alicia said that they were working with a caseworker so anytime a caseworker is involved and we're talking about um kids looking for a home um you know that that is not your permanent full custody 
a child. And as I said before, I don't want to keep repeating it, but even if it was, they still deserve privacy. But when they're already dealing with, you know, losing their parents, not being able to stay in the home that they're familiar with, not being with the parents that they are familiar with or the parent, that deserves the utmost privacy and respect. And it's a really, really delicate situation. And I personally don't believe that they should be blasted all over social media literally a day after coming into this home. Con. The only reason that we, like the main reason that we were saying no was because it would most likely negatively impact social media. Um, but remember, social media is just a hobby. It's just for fun. So why would, if it's just a hobby and you do it for fun and you can make a difference in these kids' lives, to me, that wouldn't be something that I ponder about and think about and think about it some more and sit on it and sit on it some more. I don't know if I was really trying to do this for the right reason and social media was not my nest egg, then I don't really see where all the pondering and deep thoughts came in. And it has. Uh, and then, but we finally decided like, that's, that's stupid. That's a stupid reason to say no. Like, how is that fair to these kids? The whole reason we got into social media influencing, um, not even two years ago, was to spread the word about the need for more foster homes and the need for more adoptive homes for kids in foster care. So I talked about this point in a video that I just posted, I'll link it down below, but this whole idea of awareness, I hear this all the time from influencer parents and especially influencer parents that are sharing really personal information about their child, whether it be mental health, physical health, or, you know, anything. They think they can get away with it by saying that it's spreading awareness. And I agree that I think that awareness can be an amazing thing if it's done right. And in my opinion, you can spread awareness and have a very, very strong message and have really powerful conversations with people without the kids being used in the content. What, how does that even make any sense? The kids have to be in the videos for you to spread awareness. In fact, I think that it would be less distracting to have the kids in the video because you can talk to your audience and you can share the most important pieces of what you're trying to spread awareness about and you know you're you're not having to worry about the kids running around and then you know one of them slips and falls like the kid just doesn't need to be in the video awareness is great but the kids do not have to be in said content for the content to resonate with your target demographic which is probably other people that might be looking into fostering they might be looking to adopt um you know she um ha has talked about some mental health diagnoses you can connect with those people and have a really strong connection without sharing medications giving so much info out having the kids in the content um it just all like the argument for me, it falls flat every single time. Who are we to sit there and like talk the talk and not walk the walk all because of we're social media influencers now. And we knew that it would have an impact on that. At the end of the day, social media is not our life. We love it. Social media is our hobby and we enjoy it immensely. Um, we love. Let's be honest. If it was not paying her, do you think that they would be making the type of content that they're making right now? Truly be honest because here's my thing. If there is a hobby and you consider it a hobby, you're going to do it if you're not making any money. Would she be doing this if she was not being paid for it? And I know, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, early on, I wasn't being paid for it. But when you put this much money into your content, she's constantly spending thousands of dollars every week at the grocery store, at Target, at throwing birthday parties. So there's a lot of money that's being put into this. 
Do you think that that would exist if she was not making over $40,000 by being a full-time influencer? And I hate when YouTubers say, I love you. I love you guys. I love you guys. This is, in my opinion, a manipulation tactic. I think that um, family vloggers like the people that watch their content because it pays them. Um, at the end of the day, I think that there's been a few inappropriate parasocial relationships that Alicia has formed, like with Auntie Lauren. But aside from those select few, how can you love people that you don't know? You might, you know, respond to their comment once in a while. And maybe I just take the word love way too serious. And maybe that's a me problem. But I've also seen many YouTubers drop the word love as a way to connect with subscribers like Auntie Lauren, who is now completely obsessed with Alicia's kids, and she feeds into it. But we also are not naive. We know that one day you can be a social media influencer and the next day you're fizzled up, you're gone. Like, that's it. So social media is never ever how we pay our bills. We pay our bills from our jobs and any money we make from social media is- So she is a full-time influencer. So her, this makes absolutely zero fucking sense. Let's break this down. We do not pay our bills because of being influencers. We pay our bills because of our jobs. Her husband is in the education um, industry. She is a full-time influencer. Influencing does pay your bills. And you can't tell me that she's dropping $1,200 at, uh, at Wegmans once a week on a teacher's salary try to make that argument it, there's no way anyone would be able to drop twelve hundred dollars at Wegmans hundreds and hundreds of dollars at Target and all these other stores pay a household full of bills that's mortgage utilities car notes buy all of this uh clothing and snacks and all this stuff for these kids aside from her grocery bill off of a teacher's salary. So you want to say that you're an influencer because it's your hobby. And then you want to say that you pay your bills because of your job, but your job is an influencer. So it's not your hobby. And the money is what keeps you going. So let's just be upfront and honest. And let's say that y'all got into the algorithm, you blew up, you're making an, a truckload of money, and that's what keeps it going. Nobody would literally be able to do this if they were not making an insane amount of money by exploiting their kids' medical issues, period. Just extra. It's fun money. It's splurge money. It's the kids are spoiled money. So that was when we saw um, groceries is not fun money, and I'm pretty sure that allegedly some of that money from social media goes to paying for bills. Your necessary expenses every month are things like bills and groceries. And I would say that necessity is buying clothing for what you consider your bonus kids. This lady's full of shit. I, I don't know what to tell you guys. Uh, yes, we can take, we are like, that was stupid. Like these kids can come stay with us, have fun. Like, I mean, our house is fun. You've seen our house, right? Like it's a fun house. Um, so in the name of a fun house. Now she's expecting followers to think of their house as the fun house just based off these little TikToks and YouTube videos that she does. None of us know what's really happening when the camera is off, but she did allow us to see a little bit behind the curtain and I'll link that video down below. If you missed it, please go watch it. If you are watching this video because you're intrigued by this family, go watch that video. They were making these breakfast quesadillas. Alicia was pressuring the kids to be uh, in the video. You have one of her daughters flipping off people, talking about sex and cussing and all this kind of stuff. It was wild. And it was so wild 
that she took the video down. YouTubers don't take videos down just because they get a couple of bad comments. They take videos down if it's showing people what's really going on. So you can say that you have a fun house all day long and there can, people, there can be people that believe that all day long. But I think that many of us that have critical thinking skills and look at things like this and say, mm, I don't know. To me, I'm not going to consider someone a, a, a fun house. I would rather have a structured house. I would rather have a house that, you know, um, there are life lessons being instilled in these children, not buying a bunch of junk food at Walmart and, you know, playing video games. That's just me. I think that things are... Um, Things should be fun at times, but there are much more important things than materialistic bullshit. And to me, the amount of money that she spends on just nonsense is astronomical. And I think that the kids see that. Yeah, of course, it's fun to have a bunch of candy and lollipops and um, play video games. But is that really instilling in the kids what her overall message is? it was a at first it was like two weeks it was like a temporary thing not temporary but they weren't sure what the permanent situation was going to be so we were in like this interim influx phase um and we went to court this week to figure out like their next step um and the next step is that the children will remain in our care um until at least august at which point we will go back to court and see where things are standing with um mom getting back on her feet and all of that so it's still temporary so you are exploiting and oversharing on kids that are not hers permanently so still even after all this we are not talking about a permanent long-term full custody situation um and I, I don't I don't believe that these kids should be blasted all over social media I think that they need um love and nurturing and one-on-one -on -one attention and role models and you know not what's happening here and that's just my personal opinion and that might be a little bit of uh passing judgment but i am trying to do this in the nicest way possible um i'm speaking from the stance of having two polar opposite households that i grew up in and i'll tell you guys my mom's house was what i would consider the fun house you know, junk food, she would let me do whatever I want. But guess which house, when I was given the choice of who gets full custody, I went and told my guardian ad litem, I want to live with my dad. Because my dad was instilling really good values and, you know, home cooked meals. And I wasn't allowed to just sit on the couch and play video games. And it, it was just a night and day difference. So you know, it might be fun temporarily. Just the fact that these, this arrangement is not permanent long term yet. And, and the fact that she has shared so much about these two kids is, um, is not something I'm okay with. And since she has put it out publicly, I'm allowed to have opinions about it. So basically the kids are staying with us. They're going to have a super fun summer um, at our house while mom works on some things and while we support mom through that process. Because um, if you've not noticed by now, we do not believe in just fostering the child. Like we foster the entire family. Like you are part of our family. Once you come to our house, like you're all family. And unfortunately, once you are part of this family who puts everything out on the social media, you better not let Alicia find out anything that is um, really private and personal to you because chances are she will either let it slip in the background of a vlog or she will, you know, kind of hint around at it to the point where subscribers know, like subscribers aren't stupid, um, who she's talking about. And she has done this many times where she will throw slight jabs and a little bit of shade at birth parents and subscribers will know who she's talking about. It's not her journey to share with the kids and it's not her place to throw shade at a parent that might be dealing with um, uh, addiction or mental health issues. 
just so that she can make herself feel better and look better to the internet. It's very, very weird. But they are not in foster care. It is a kinship placement because mom and I are friends, uh, biological mom and I are friends. So because it's a kinship placement, court even went over it during the court hearing, like mom knows, dad knows, court knows, caseworkers know, judge knows that I am a social media influencer, that prudent parenting is you treat all the kids in your house exactly this. Okay, so that means that all the kids get to be exploited. And she's trying to justify it by saying that uh, caseworker, judge knows, all this kind of stuff. She has said that she gives her kids the option to um, be in videos, but that's also been proven to not be true based off of the quesadilla deleted video and also a video that was posted on Reddit where she has admitted to bribing kids and in the quesadilla video she puts some pressure and she says like no i need a video of you making dinner so that's not putting a video idea out there and then allowing the kid to choose that is her dictating what uh what she needs in order to grow their popularity online and who knows what happens if the kid really says no no i'm not gonna do it and she pushes some more and then we get into power struggles and the child wanting to please the adult it, it, it can just lead to a, a whole mess and i've said for the longest time err on the side of caution protect your children instead of exploiting them i don't give a damn how they got to you kinship foster adoption biological kid you as their guardian or parent your role is to protect them period same um so yeah one can be in my videos if they choose to be in my videos and it's the same for all my kids i say here's my video idea for anyone who wants to be in it this is what i'm gonna do right now and my kids choose and that's why sometimes there's randomly not a kid roll the clip of her bribing uh admitting to bribing bribing her kids they didn't want me you know Right, and that's totally fine. Yeah. And she literally bribes Harleys with water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Billy, let me tell you something. Anybody who says that bribes are not used at some point is not telling the truth. We all use bribes at some point when they are It's my needed. best flow, will, my I best will, parenting tactic. <laughs> in a video here or there because they didn't want to be in that video um so that's the same thing i do with nevea and deshaun and they choose whether they want to be in my videos or not and right now they're really enjoying it because come on it's fun um so that's where we stand we're not adopting them we are not fostering them um they're staying with us as like a family friend placement um and we're enjoying our time with them so that's all that i'm gonna watch of her video um you know to me this is just She's someone who wants to stand on a really important message that a lot of people will agree with, but her own words and her own actions prove that that's not her deal. She's not giving her kids a choice. She is um, not protecting their privacy. And it, yeah, sure. Like, as I said, if you want to look at this as she's providing a fun house for kids, you can look at it that way, but I don't think that being in TikTok videos and eating junk food equates to um, the type of environment that a lot of kids need, especially if they've been taken away from their birth parents because of trouble at home. Being plastered all over TikTok for clicks and views and having their medical information shared with the world ain't it and I'm here to talk about it. So either way, that's going to be for now. I will have another video sharing some, um, some other clips and stuff that I've kind of put together. But either way, for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.